going to go into the pixel persona. What you need for this is to have a pixel design. So for example, let me just go to my brush tool and pick one of the basic brushes. Okay, here we go. And I'm going to change the color of this to make it stand out a bit more. So this is what my brush stroke looks like. I'm going to delete those and I'm going to make it a bit bigger. I'm going to change the color to blue. And I'm going to change the color again. What am I going to do? Uh, yellow. There we go. So this is now what's going to make up my brush stroke. So go into the brush studio. Let's take that away. Go into the brush studio, which is here. Click on here, bring up my particular grouping. As you can see, I've been having a great deal of fun with various designs, making brushes from them. Click up here and new brush from selection. And this has already made the brush for me. Now you're thinking it's looking a bit messy. Yes, it is. The reason for that is the spacing. So you have your menu across here, which is the general menu, size, hardness, flow, accumulation, the spacing, I want to increase the spacing somewhat. Because you can use these as individual shape stamps, if you wish. There we go. So I've done that, that's nice and easy. The blending mode is left on normal. I'm not interfering with anything else. Now the dynamics, that's a whole different ball game. Now with this, you can get a lot of variation just by having the one brush. If I shift the size, you can see it's going to alter the size. Now it's going to alter the size according to the pressure. I could have it according to the tilt of my pencil. I could have it on rotation of the item. I could have it on none. Or, as I like to do, I can set it on random. So that's going to adjust the size of my hearts randomly. Now the other thing, which is really, really cool, and I love, 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 is the hue. You can change the colours. Now you can do this slider as much as you like, but that preview isn't going to change. Mm -mm. Until you tap on the information below it and you tap in random or pressure or whatever it is that you want to change that design. So I'm now going to click on OK and I'm going to select this one and dump it and I'm going to go to my brush tool and I'm going to put the size down a bit because it's a bit too big at the moment and I am just going to tap randomly and I'll get different colours and different sizes of the same design. Now I could of course make it so there's no spacing and completely alter the look of this brush. Again, you have the context menu down here and if you want to edit it, change the colour for example, I can also go back into my menu and alter that again, alter the dynamics of it so that I don't change the colour or I can go in here and I can take the spacing down so it makes it a solid line. Let's have a look, see what that does. That looks interesting. And now when I do it, it's closer, much closer together, but not close enough, I don't think. Let's take the spacing down still further. There we go. And I'm going to select all that. I'll get rid of it. And here we are. Whoops. That helps if I select the brush tool. There we, there we are. So this is now my brush tool. So as you can see, that is pretty easy to do and it's very, very useful if you're doing card making, sticker making, if you're doing labels, if you are doing scrapbooking or journaling. Excellent tool to know how to use. You can even use fonts and words to make your brushes if you want to. So I hope you've enjoyed the video. Please leave some comments down below. It's much appreciated when you do. If you'd like to subscribe and you haven't, please do that. And give me a thumbs up. 
that's a good idea too. If you want to see more Affinity tutorials, make sure to tell me down below. See you soon. Bye bye.